We're live right now. Okay, we want to say that we appreciate everybody for being here in the house of God. And we also appreciate all of you that are going to be listening through the live stream. We have a, a good report. We just came back from Canada, and God moved tremendously. And if you have any questions, uh, you can get with me, and you know where I live, or you got my phone number, I, and I can inform you of everything that took place. But God is moving in a great way where we're seeing unity and Many that are in bondage, God is releasing them by his power. And this morning we want to say that we're honored to be able to say that we uh, can come live and be able to share the word of God with you. So we want to say God loves you and we love uh, you also. And we just want to say let God have his way inside of your life in this day and time. We have a tremendous speaker here He's from, he was raised here in Marble City, Oklahoma. He's not a stranger unto us, but all of you that <clears throat> know Dennis James, him and his wife and his daughter is here with us. And at this time, we are going to turn the service over unto them and let them obey God. We that are here, and if you want to, if you're listening on live stream, we're going to give Jesus a great big hand clap, our friend, as they come to minister the word of God. Let's give God a great big hand clap, our friend. Great, uh, great things going on in the in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Just honored to be a part of it. Uh, I have my wife and my daughter here, Jamie. We uh, we travel quite a bit. It wasn't really our plan to do that. Uh, seems like it's just getting more and more. Because I was I was well satisfied just left alone. Amen. But I've got, I've come to find out God won't just leave you alone. <laughs> he likes to really mess with me. Yeah, how about y'all? <laughs> I just wonder if I'm in the right place this morning. Uh, we recently just came back from Kansas City up to uh, Brother uh, Mike Kronk and Linda, precious people in the Lord, and have a tremendous work up there. And uh, thank you, Chief. Bye-bye. And uh, there's a, uh, as we went up there, the, the meeting was really scheduled for my daughter on a Saturday. They have a woman's meeting that they have every month. And Mike had been wanting to get her up there for a while, quite some time. And he, we finally got the time to do that. And when we went up there on the Saturday, me and Mike just had to drive around. Mike has a business, has a trucking business. And uh, we drove around and talked all that day, and uh, it was really a really, really fun, really fun day. And uh, so his wife was so impressed with Jamie, she told her husband, said it was the best woman's meeting they'd ever had since they'd been having them. And she was so impressed with it that she wanted Jamie to open the Sunday morning service and then me finish it. And I really felt like I should have just kept my mouth shut and let her go on. Because I'm telling you, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. What Jamie really, you know, Jamie broke down her life story like I've never heard it before. And I'm her daughter, and I'm her dad. And I made it through every journey with her. You know, this, uh, when we talk about addiction, you know, there's some people, you know, a year or two, a year or two. We're, we're talking about a 25-year span of her life. And, and we're not talking about smoking a little joint or something. We're talking about shooting heroin. We're talking about going as deep as you can go. I mean, over a span of 25 years, you know, to the point that she lost everything. Home, children, everything. Still in a battle of trying to, still in, hadn't seen her children in three years. And though she'd been straight for almost six months now, still hadn't been able to get it done. So, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a story. It's a, it's a wild story. <laughs> but we're not talking about a little bit of, 
month or two, you know, I was out there. This is a real deal. And what happened was, what, what, really, what really struck me was how innocent it began. She has, a, she has a CD. We meant to bring them and have uh, Dale run some off. But she has a CD. They, they, they made CDs of it. We sent a copy of it to Bob, and Bob and uh, Jerry was out there at that time, and, and he wrote us back, and he said, there's not a dry eye here in this house. It's such a striking deal of what God's done in her life. And uh, they're, they're editing it and getting it ready. They're fixing to put it out because it's had such a life-changing story in it. But what the beginning was, what people don't understand, she didn't just decide one day and say, hey, I'm going to become a drug addict. You know, it started very innocent. It started with a cough syrup. Isn't that amazing? It started through a doctor's care. That's what's amazing. That's what people don't understand. How innocent it can start with your children through doctor's cares. And that's really what she brings out, and it's a really good message. Amen? Amen. As y'all was talking here this morning, it, it went right in line with what I'm going to share with you this morning. I don't know where this is going. 90% of the time, I've just got where I, where I just try to follow the Spirit. You know, when it, when it talks about following the Lamb, we as speakers, if you'll remember when Jesus told his disciple, he said, when they asked, where do you live? And he said, come and see. Isn't it so easy to make in our imagery what that means without counting the cost of what it's going to cost. For instance, to come and see where he lives means I'm going to have to abandon where I live. Right? In the book of Revelations at the end, we see that these are those that has followed the Lamb ever so wherever where he goeth. How many of you as speakers in ministries, and I, I believe I speak to ministries, you know, you tend to want to water your message down when you're in a certain group. How many of you have been there? See, they, these are those that don't water. They follow the lamb ever so wherever he goeth. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? See, I'm, I, I'm not going into a group of people to meet their expectations. Do you see that? See, what set me free was someone in being able and bold enough to tell me the truth. So follow the Spirit ever to wherever He goeth. <laughs> Are you brave enough to do that? When you're sitting in the midst of a people and you know somewhat of what they believe. Hmm? Are you able to, to stand in the midst of a people that has a carnal concept of heaven and hell and rapture and all that stuff and dispute all of that and tell them the truth. That's following the Lamb wherever where he goeth. Is it popular? Are you doing it for popularity? You see what I'm saying? Are you doing it for a church crowd? Are you doing it to be accepted? Or are we truly following the Lamb everywhere he tends to go. Amen? Now, I said all that for a reason. Y'all said something here this morning, maybe not realizing what you're saying, but this is what you were saying. With every tragedy that you talked about this morning, the hospital, the reports, your, your grandson, <clears throat> all of this is for reasons. All of this is bringing something about. And I don't know whether we've ever considered it or not. How many of you ever read the scripture in the book of Isaiah where it said that we shall beat our spears in the plowshares? Huh? And we keep reading on down through that scripture and it says these are those and he said then the, lamb, the lion and the lamb shall lay down together. Have you ever thought, have you, have you ever thought, you know it's so easy to just make a concept of something. 
See, because if I can make a concept of something, it's not going to cost me anything to become it. Do you understand that? If I can, if I can quote a truth or a, a promise or a faith message or a, uh, a prayer message, then, then it won't cost me nothing if I can get there by doing that concept. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we tend to want to do concepts instead of walking the lamb ever so where we're going. Now, I know in order for the lamb and the lion to lay down together, there's going to have to be a complete nature change. No concept or precept or teachings or anything will get you there. It's a walk. Does that make sense to you? Now, two things you might not realize. We're all about the lion being able to change his nature, aren't we? See, the lion is a meat eater. He's a predator, right? We look at that as the carnal man, right? We like to devour one another. <laughs> Christian's the only one that don't heal up the vine. They, they just slaughter them and go on with it. <laughs> so, so we're okay with that nature, aren't we? We, we say, okay, we know that nature's got to change. But have you ever thought about the concept, the lamb's nature's got to change too? Wow. Did you hear that? It's not only the lion's nature's got to change, the lamb's nature's got to change. Because the lamb cannot never lay down with the lion with the concept of being afraid of it. Did you hear that? We come in Christianity and we are scared to death about everything because we are taught that. Aren't we? We're taught to fear hell, fear God, fear heaven, fear this. That's, how many of you know that's the, a lamb's true nature? That's its only defense is to run. Amen? That's how it flees from the enemy is to run. You ever find yourself running from everything? Running from this, running from that, never facing anything? So guess what? The lamb's nature has to change. God has ordained precepts and principles into us and into the situation of the world to bring that change about. And if we ever recognize that change, fear no longer is a tactic anymore. If we ever know that everything that is touching us is allowed of God and it's bringing life, regardless of what it looks like, fear begins to leave us. Can you hear that? So guess what? Can I take this off? I may walk around with that bottle still if I walk around. Okay. So in this journey that we're in we are having our nature change how many of you know that that lion and that lamb is not laying down out there somewhere in the world that lion and lamb is your makeup you were born from the first Adam and now you're being reborn back into the last Adam so you're dealing with two natures. You're dealing with the lamb nature and you're dealing with the lion nature. Amen? So everything that comes our way is to either put fear in us or to put courage in us. Sometimes we have to go through lots of situations in order to get rid of fear. For instance, listen this morning to the report that we had. Clifton's grandson was life flighted. This lady back here on the back, I don't know, what are you fancy, facing cancer? Okay, cancer. Uh, Birdie was, didn't know anybody. Okay. Look at all that. To the carnal natural mind, that puts fear everywhere and everybody. 
Cancer. I mean, many, when you hear that in your life, what does it do? Death. Automatic. Why? Because we all got family and friends that we know has died from cancer. And very few people survives it. Right? Certain kinds of cancer. So the statistic is against us. Right? God spoke something to me about two days ago. Three days. What's the day? I lose track of days. Anyway, we're facing another situation. that We'll come through it. But God told me and, and Jamie and, and uh, Sheila, he said, I want you from now on to fear nothing. No report, nothing. He said, and this is what I want you to do. Believe no word except mine. Listen to no word except mine. At that time, we didn't know what was fixing to happen. How I many of you know that God's a true prophet? <laughs> God's the only prophet I want to hear. Amen? And he'll speak stuff in our lives before it happens. And all of a sudden when he speaks, I thought I knew what he was talking about. We didn't have a clue, did we? But we do now. But he had prepared us. You see what I'm trying to say? All these things are happening. Why? So the lamb will lay down with the lion. When the lamb lays down with the lion, that means that the lamb nature has changed from fear into trusting. Oh, glory to God. Can you hear what I'm trying to say? See, I've always looked at the lion nature's changing. And all of a sudden, God spoke to me and said, the lamb's nature's got to change too. And I thought, wow. So everything that God is using is to his advantage. There is nothing touching our lives today, whether it comes in sickness, death, I don't care what it comes as, that God has not allowed it. It couldn't come unless God allowed it. Amen? And when you come to that point in your life, the lamb is truly laid down with the lion because you don't fear no more. Amen? Isn't it wonderful where God's taking us? My wife, I was going to have her, she don't like to talk much, but this is a concept, watch. She's had a, she, this is really funny. She, but, it, but it's not, it's a truth. It's a truth how we are. And this is so true in spiritual reality and in Christianity realms. She's had an a eye appointment. How many of you ever tried to get an eye appointment check your nose? <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, it's, it's like going, getting through the Red Sea. I mean, they're 14 months out. How long have you had this eye appointment? A year. She's had it wrote down in her phone, Okay. And had a paper, had a call three days before. You know, they call you. They don't only just call you. They tell you when you're supposed to be there, come a little bit early, and the time. She had the time wrote down at 8 o'clock on her phone, her appointment. She got a call from 8 o'clock appointment. And she had been saying her appointment was 9 o'clock for, for a year. You know what? She didn't hear nothing the woman said. She didn't read her notes. It said 9 o'clock to her. There was no one that could have convinced her that her appointment was not at 9 o'clock. Matter of fact, she showed up at 9 o'clock, and they said, you're an hour late. And she argued with them. No, I'm not. And she happened to pull back up on her phone, 8 o'clock. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you realize what I'm trying to say to you here? How many times have we done scripture the same way? No one can convince us that it does not mean that. Amen? It's even wrote. <laughs> when you get to preaching this message, you'll get that a lot. It's written right here. I know it's written right there. 
but it don't really mean what you're saying it's meaning. There's depth to it. Dale, do you have the ability to pull up Scripture? Would you go to Revelation chapter 9 for me? I'm going to give you that concept here this morning. Okay? What, uh, what version are you in? I don't care. Just a, give me a good English one without the D's and the dials. <laughs> just, just give me a good plain English. Something that, something that my carnal mind can understand. <laughs> let's get rid of all the definitions in me. Let's just read it. Let's just read out plain English. How's that? Is it okay? All right. Verse 1. The fifth angel, that word there means agent, means messenger. It's not a pot-bellied, weeny thing as we've been taught. <laughs> it's not these images that we've painted to be angels. Okay? He said he sounded his trumpet. In other words, he's speaking forth something as loud as a trumpet. And he said, I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key of the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it, and the smoke from a, what is that? Y'all sounded real good there. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke locusts came down upon the earth. And they were given power like of the scorpions of the earth. And they, told, and they were told not to harm the grass of the plants and the trees. But only those people who did not have the seal of God within their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torment them for five months. And the ages and the, and the agony they suffered was like that of a sting of a scorpions, which it had struck. During those days, people sought death, but they will not find it. They will long for death, but death will elude them. And that, I stopped there just for a minute. Keep that pulled up right there. It sounds like a bad time, don't it? How many of, how many of you have been taught where, where, the, where the enemy is arraigned at? Where did, where's his abode at? And, and what's, his, uh, what's his agenda? You know, as long as we have a, as long as we have a devil to blame, we do, we do not deal with our situations. Amen? I guarantee you 99% of Christianity believes that as an explanation or a definition or an unveiling of the enemy. Would I be correct in assuming that? How many of you know that this book says in the beginning that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> How many of you know he hadn't changed his theme? This is the unveiling, the unfolding of Jesus Christ. Amen? In order to understand this, the, lion, the lamb's going to have to lay down with this lion. Do you understand that? Now, I'll go to you with another story. You remember the story, and I preached this to my daughter one time. See, my daughter wasn't, my daughter's been through serious uh, uh, deliverance of all kinds of things. She just wasn't in drug addiction. She was uh, mutilating herself. She'd cut herself all over. I mean, from top to bottom. And uh, I remember one Sunday morning, and my daughter also, uh, another thing I want to understand, she wasn't just delivered from drug addiction, she was delivered from alcoholism. She was an alcoholic. If it, if it was out there, she'd done it. I mean, I'm talking about, she, she'd go to a movie and take her purse full of alcohol and, and throw up all over the bathroom. 
I mean, she could, I mean, it was, uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is there's, there's many things that, that occurred here in order for her to get here. It wasn't just one shot in the arm saying, hey, praise God, I'm delivered. You know, there's a kid being delivered. You got to stay delivered. <laughs> it ain't a one shot in the arm deal and say, hey, it's over. I wish I had that for you, but I'm sorry, it ain't out there. So I, I read this story to her. How many of you m- remember when Jesus said he loaded his disciples up and they started from Galilee and they went over to the other side? I don't believe he was just crossing an ocean. This man, you'll know the story, he was in the Gadolines, the tombs. That's where he said he resided. And he said he was a lunatic. Anybody know anybody like that? <laughs> Jesus said his disciples were with him and they crossed over. They crossed that gulf. And they went right into death itself. See, any of you don't think there's progressing after death don't know Scripture. Can you hear me? If that was true, then Moses couldn't have advanced. Moses was kept out of the promised land because of rebellion, and he died and didn't go into the promised land, but yet we see him at the mountain of transfiguration with Elijah and Jesus and Moses. So that tells me something's happening on the other side of the veil. (laughs) Amen? (laughs) So as our prophet says, God ain't, death don't stop God. Christianity has made you fear death and wants you to make a decision. You can't make a decision for God. Everybody say, well, oh, I remember when I found God. God's never been lost. I remember when I accepted him. He don't have to be accepted. He's greater than my belief, Lummy. He's greater than my faith. He didn't ask me when he was going to walk into my life. He didn't say, hey, Dennis, I'm going to send my son. If you'll make a decision, I'll let him die for you. He didn't ask me about all of that. I'm coming to find out he don't ask me very much about anything. My God's a doer. And when he sets his mind, and he has set his mind from the beginning of creation of what he's going to do, and there is nothing, nothing, no power is able to detract him from his purpose. Amen? That's the God I serve, John. That's the God I serve, brother. Amen? Amen. So, all of a sudden, we hear in this great story, and we, you know, Dust dwellers need to stay out of here. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> there is no place for the dust realm there. <laughs> you will get all kinds of concepts. <laughs> Amen. So anyway, when Jesus went over, here was this man bound in chains. He'd been there, and there was a legion in him. And everybody says, oh, God, let's get all scared over this legion. <laughs> There's a legion in all of us. So let's just settle it. <laughs> what does that legion mean? It means a stronghold. If you look it up in scripture, have you ever noticed in certain areas of the United States or of the world, there is always something predominant that in certain areas? That's called legions. That it's a rank of an army. It's a strong, pro- like right here. The legion that I would call here would be drug addiction in this area. It's a legion here in Sequoia County, right? Would we agree? So that's a legion. So it's, it's no, this woo spook out thing. You understand what I'm trying to say? So when he walked in there, he said, and, and, that, and that voice spoke to him, a short spoke to him. It's able to speak. And all of a sudden he said, have you come to torment us before our time? They knew they had that spirit, that that person in you know, you have a time allotted. 
because he knows that God has allotted time for humanity. Time wasn't made for God. God's timeless. Time is made for humans in this journey. Now, wouldn't you suspect if you were a demon that you wouldn't be bothered to be cast back where your original estate was? Huh? If you read on into that story, I'm not there in that story, but you can go back and read it just for the sake of time because we're going to definitely run out of time before I get anywhere in this. I've got many, I've got nowhere. <laughs> but you would think in that story that they wouldn't, they would be comfortable in the pit. Wouldn't you? Hey, if they come out of the pit, they got to be comfortable there. Right? This is coming out of the pit. That's what the abyss is. It's a pit. Now you would think if the evilness that's coming forth out of that would be very comfortable, wouldn't you? But you know what they told Jesus? Don't send us into the deep. Wow. Now, another interesting story. See how we take 9 o'clock appointments when they're really 8? <laughs> Get my point? If you would think that that was their home place, that that's where they originated out of, they would be very comfortable there, wouldn't you? Do you notice that, that, that they also said this? They drove the man into the wilderness, into the desert, away from the pit. Isn't that something? Wow. And all of a sudden now they're saying, don't send us there, but send us into this herd of swine. What does the swine mean? Represents humanity. It's the uncleanness. Remember the beast? You was not or you was not supposed to eat pork. Some of y'all's real pork eaters. I pray for y'all. <laughs> but but you know what it represents, right? So all of a sudden, where are they wanting to go? They want they know that this person right here is fixing to be clean. They want to stay where they belong. Where? In the carnality, in the natural realm. You know how hard we fight to stay there? Isn't that something? So they're driven away from where they're supposed to be coming out of. So who's this? Let's make a determination here. Who's coming out of the pit? Come on now. Who's coming out of the pit? Who has the key to the pit? Right? Who, who is the message coming out of the pit? <laughs> when God was delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt, who was bringing the plagues? Who? Can you not associate every bit of this in Old Testament prophecy? How God used serpents and everything to walk among the people to sting them? See, your lamb's not wanting to lay down with your lion right now. <laughs> you know why your lamb won't, don't want to lay down with the lion? Because you want something to fight. Can you hear that? You want to defend that so you can fight against that. And when the lamb lays down with the lion, there's no more fighting. I realize that these locusts is prepared for a battle, and they're prepared for a battle that don't have the mark of God in their forehead. Oh, hallelujah. God's bringing an army in this day, and it's not going to be an army of lukewarmness or Christianity, but it's an army to be able to do battle against the carnal mind, to stand against the carnal mind, and to fear no man. Amen? Now listen, this thing, it said that they'd seek death. Have you ever been so miserable in God that you wanted to die? Some of you are too Christianity to say that. I've been so miserable in God, if I could have killed myself, I would have. Can you hear that? What was the misery part of me? 
that part that didn't want to give up what I held so dear in me. I'm going to tell you people, there's not a place in you that he's not going to touch. Listen, some of us has got to be 10 karat gold and we're satisfied. Some of us has gone on to be 14 karat gold and we're satisfied. Some of us has gone on to be 20 karat gold and we're satisfied. But you know, each time they know the, the guy that is breaking that gold knows exactly how much heat to get 20 karat. He knows how much heat to apply to get 14 karat. And he knows how much heat to apply to get 20 karat. Each time that that fire is applied, something boils up out of that to make it more pure and something skimmed off. Amen? God is not satisfied with a 10 carat, a 14 carat, a 20 carat, a 60 carat. He is satisfied with 100% carat. Pureness. Where we ride with him in the book of Revelations in the last chapter of a white horse being all clothed together. Where it's no longer I'm riding, but it's the Christ riding. Right now, we have way too many personalities in our ministries. We have too many personalities, too many preachers we love, too many people we hold to. It reminds me of Paul. I'm of Silas. I'm of this and I'm of that. And Paul scolded them deeply. said, you are wrong. Christ is our head. And I'm going to tell you what, we're going to be stung. We're going to be beat down until we become his Christ. Amen. Listen to this. I got good news for you. I love you. I love you. I'm going to beat you up a little bit, but then I'm going to heal you. I'm going to pour some wine in you. God told me a long time ago, said, if you take something away, replace it. Amen. So I'm going to replace something here. I took a lot of things away this morning, but I am going to replace something. I have some good news for you. I got some bad news for the old man. Uh, he ain't going to make this trip. <laughs> I got some really bad news for your old carnality. He ain't coming. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he ain't going to come halfway. Amen. I love what the word in the, in the Hebrew means. In the Greek. It talks about that sting. It means to go. G-O-A-D. Goad. Like a prod. You know, they, they use that they use that terminology, Sonny, you'll know this, like when you go to cow into a chute. God allows those stings until he goats us to where he wants us. <laughs> It'd be easier for me to die. That's what it says. Many things that I've had to go through in my life, it would have been easier for me to die. But death flees from you. You know what he says? You're coming. So what is he bringing us to? You know what 90% of the time we fight so hard for? Death. Because we don't know the difference. It's like Sheila's appointment. What we call life, he calls death. All this glamour out here that we love so much going on is death rim. None of it's going to survive. Why do we get so all wrapped up in it? There isn't a one thing of it's going to survive. None of this is going to operate into the kingdom. Even the best this world or the best the church or Christianity got to offer will not operate in the kingdom of God. Amen? Matter of fact, he says it this way. He said, listen, the carnally minded cannot serve me, will not serve me, won't serve me, and I will not allow him to serve me. That's Dennis' interpretation. <laughs> Amen? So, who's letting, it, who's letting this out of the pit? <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't the evil one. It's God. And if you look, if you look through all that whole battle there, and, and I'm not going to read it for the sake of it, but it would give you a good time to read it. Everything that's happening in the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation is God's messenger coming forth. And they have a word that will actually sting that old natural man, buddy. He don't like to hear this message. He don't like to hear no part about it. Amen? 
He'd rather have a concept of heaven off up there somewhere, and he's just going to be one day swift up into the wild blue yonder in some way metamorphosally changed between here and there. That'd be really nice if we could get that done, but I don't see it happening. Amen? So, out of that, we come to the conclusion that God is preparing something. He has prepared his ministry in this day to bring forth a word. And you're not going to be popular. If you want to be popular at all of religion, you're walking in the wrong crowd. If you want to be agreeable to every message that you're hearing right now, you're in the wrong message. Because it ain't happening. You hear me? If Jesus was going to be a peacemaker among all the messages that was going on in his day, why did he get crucified? He was against every message of that land that day. There wasn't a message in that land that day that he agreed with. He was in total opposite of every message going on. Do you not think, do you think he was fighting sinners? Do you think he was arguing with sinners? No, he ate with them. His argument was with the church. Those claiming to be his. Amen? So guess what? Are we any different? Are we going to walk any different? My object is not to destroy. My object is to save. Do you understand that? I love you enough, and Jesus loves you enough to tell you the truth. Can you hear me? See, truth makes you free. It don't set you free. It makes you free. So that being made is an ongoing progress, right? So it's a continuation. Amen? How many of you truly want to follow the Lamb ever so wherever where are you going? <laughs> what about if it meant uprooting you from everybody you believe and everybody you love right now? I'm not saying it's going to, but are you willing you see what I'm saying? I got two real close friends right now. I got uprooted from everything they love and theirs. Sabrina and, and Russ, their whole life, boom. And I got one right now in the process of doing the same thing. God's moving Gary and Lydia to Tennessee and uprooting them from everything, all their family and everything. Gone. I mean, every round in the process right now, selling everything they have, every relationship, their family and everything. And they're in an uproar. They don't want to go. See, God, God, this day of, I'm sorry to tell you, but if you've been called to hear this message that's coming forth in this day that we're all beginning to walk in, I'm going to tell you something right now. Some of you may not be here to hear that. Some of you may have just blundered in here by mistake. Sometimes I think I blundered in this by mistake. <laughs> but God is, is this is a diff, this is a new day we're walking in. This is a serious day. God's not playing church. God's forming an army. You know, this day right here is beginning to dawn. There's a people today that is beginning to speak the truth out of these rims right here to let people know what's going on. See, the prophets of God, the true prophets of God, knows what's happening in the day they're in. Amen? And it's not playing things. It's, been, it's coming forth and bringing forth a word that will set creation free. Shoot you one of those men. Do you hear me? You're one of those men. I don't, I don't care where you went. I could care less. It was necessary. Do you understand that? But what you got to understand it, it was necessary to launch you into where you're at now and where you're going to go. So fear not. And don't feel condemned with any man or anybody. You hear me, brother? You have a word in you, and it's a word of reconciliation of telling the truth. Amen? And it's not a compromising word. 
I mean, I'm telling you, you, you guys want to go to the nations, you're going to have to get a backbone in you to speak the true word of God <laughs> against faces of armed. And your opposition will be some of those close to you in the way you used to believe. Can you hear me? Where are you going? Where are you going? See, just because somebody's preaching in the name of Jesus and hears his name on everything they say, I don't believe everything they say. I can take the name of Jesus here this morning and tie it to a lot of good concepts that you could really get a hold of and say, man, that was good, but it has no substance in it. It was only good. See, the tree of good, is not, it's just not evil, it's good. There's a lot of good things coming about right now, but that don't mean it's profitable, that it brings life. Amen? So we see these scriptures here, and in that representation of Jesus crossing over to that other side, if those legions had been their home, don't you think that they'd say, hey, cast us into the deep. Where we come from? Right? That'd be where I'd want to go. But watch, it said that the herd of swine, listen, they didn't want to go there, but they went there anyway. <laughs> Where did they end up? <laughs> they thought the swine was going to get them out of it? Come on. We think sometimes we can bypass what God's going to do. Let me go over here, Lord. It's not as hard over here. All of a sudden, they went into the swine. Where'd the swine end up? In the front? Anyway, right into the pit. Because, see, it's in the pit. It's in the depths of your spirit that God's doing this work. Oh, glory to God. It's right there where they will be exposed and destroyed. And sometimes that's the last place we want to go. But if you read the rest of that chapter, and like I said, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but you just get the idea. Because that's always been, the only thing I wanted to do was to give you a shift here this morning. Has that given you a little bit of a shift? Yeah. How uh, scripture ain't always nine o'clock. <laughs> I don't care how many times you read it. Scripture is not always nine o'clock. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the greatest thing that God's doing, He's preparing a people. You know, God's beginning to send y'all out. What are you? Are you going to follow the Lamb when you go out? I'm putting a question to you. Are you going to follow the lamb or are you going to go out? <laughs> well, following the lamb is not always a grid. <laughs> Do you hear that? Sure, we're there to bless the people, but we're there to tell them the truth. Amen? It was the truth that brought me where I'm at, not somebody compromising in line. It was men that paid the price, and they're still paying the price. Amen? Hey, when I go to meetings with, uh, with Gary and, and, and Bob and, and, and Brother Evie and, and Elwin, uh, people, we, we're, we're, not, we're not sitting in a group where the auditorium's full. You hear me? We travel all over the world, and, and 90%, just like Rock Clifton and all y'all know, you don't, you have, sometimes you don't get paid for your trip. So it's not in that. Yeah. But we'll go to the widow. If it's a house meeting, we'll go. And if it's in California, we'll go. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're not into that. We're into to putting what God is putting together. And I believe with all my heart that this army right here. How many of you know at the end of the book of Revelation, we see Jesus riding on a white horse with 144,000. That's what it says, Right? all sitting up on white horses. A lot of people want to ride the white horse, but they don't want the horse to ride in them. <laughs> Come on. You're not going to ride the white horse until the white horse rides in you. Amen? And you look at chapter 6, verses 21. Chapter 6 of the book of Revelation speaks about the four horsemen of Revelation. We see a single man wearing a crown, conquered in chapter 21 we see a man 
with 144,000 riding the same horse. These are they that has followed the Lamb. I'm going to speak something here. I want you to really hear what I'm fixing to say to you. The first white horse represents Jesus as Calvary. It was his conquer. He conquered sin, death, and the grave, right? Do you know 90% of Christianity wants to stay at Mount Calvary? Did you hear that? They want to just simply stay in what he did instead of what he did to them. Amen? Nothing wrong with that. That's where we all start. But are you going to be the ones that's going to follow to Mount Zion? See, from the book of Revelations to this chapter here that I'm talking about, there is many things transpiring in a believer's life. Many things. There's many wars. And if you'll notice, this war that we're beginning to fight is not a war where we get up and slap this thing. It'd be a lot easier if I could just have a fist fight. <laughs> Wouldn't it? <laughs> Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to just get a diction out and just beat up? I would say something, but I'm in church. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't you? Wouldn't I just get out and just thump that sucker's head? Put knots all over him? Yeah, and be done with it? Wouldn't that be nice? But guess what? This war talks about a man coming forth with a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. So this is a spiritual war. It's a word that has power of the Spirit to conquer those natures within us. Amen? Now, in the book of Revelation, like I said, most people's at Calvary, at chapter 6. But in chapter 20, it's either 20 or 21, I can't remember one of the two. Don't quote me on that. Don't mean I'm false doctrine because I can't get the right scripture, okay? But you know the jest. And uh, you still got a point at 9 o'clock. <laughs> she, my wife still hung at 9 o'clock. <laughs> so we see that the, hook, the, the white horse in the Revelation, is it an end to the Revelation of Jesus? Because you read the last chapter of the book of Revelation, does that mean that it's the end of the Revelation? Huh? Do you know the book of Revelation was written to the church? Do you know that we have planted it into the end time ministries? And it's not that at all. Another nine o'clock. Another nine o'clock. But at the end of the Revelation, it, you see, Scripture was written to be an inward Scripture. That's what Hebrew says, right? I'm no longer writing up on tablets of stone, but I'm beginning to write now this up on your heart. So now that it, look, a book, a teacher, or a preacher can only bring you so far. You hear me? This book, a teacher, a preacher, or whatever can only bring you thus far. The Bible is a schoolmaster to lead you somewhere. And once it leads you somewhere, it's done. Then you walk on into the fullness of the revelation of who he is. Amen? Don't Paul talk about that? The law was a schoolmaster. When the schoolmaster has done his deal, that's it. Isn't that something? So it's not an end of a revelation. It's the beginning of a true, pure, holy, undefiled walk into the Spirit with God. Can you trust that? Most of us, boy, we don't want to pull up those lamp poles, do we? Them, them things that's got us here. All those things. Man, you mean I'm going to have to pull them up? No, you don't pull them up. They're where the Father you. They, they're swallowed up in the greatness of who he is. Just like, just like uh, Pentecost. Pentecost ain't done away with. It's swallowed up into tabernacles. And tabernacles is not an end to a means. Tabernacles is swallowed up into the next thing. What's the next thing? Being able to walk what tabernacle done in you out. Amen? 
If you'll read after the three feasts in the book of Exodus, it talks about after the third feast was over, they began to accomplish what Tabernacles set out to do. They began to take back the land. They began to conquer the enemy in the land. And there was nothing that could stand before them. See, Tabernacles was not an end. Tabernacle will be swallowed up in the next thing, in the next thing, in the next thing. And it's an ongoing process in the things of God. Amen? Does that make sense? Sean? I've got great things for you, brother. I see great things in your life. I see a cleanness and a pureness in your life I haven't seen in a while. And I'm happy to see it. Amen? God's going to set you back a fire, brother. There's a generation coming that's going to be a fire for God. This time, you'll have a word of fire in your mouth as a two-edged sword to speak forth his truth. Amen? And go forth and conquer. Glory to God. I see that in you. Amen? And, and, you, and you will stand again and speak. You hear me? Don't hold your head down. You hold your head up. Because your journey's been of God. You hear me? It was necessary where you had to go. And you feel no guilt about that. Amen? I bless you this morning, brother, in that. I strengthen you in it. Amen? Amen. God is bringing forth the people in this time, people. And it ain't going to have a watered-down word. It's going to be a word of power and strength and authority. Because we know we're speaking as he is speaking. Amen? So the next time you're in a meeting, and I know you're going to be there, just hang on. All of a sudden you start down a trail and you say, boy, I don't want to go here. Will you follow the lamb ever wherever where he goeth? <laughs> Ask yourself, will you? <laughs> I used to say, oh, yeah, Lord. <laughs> I found out real quick. I didn't have the courage to do it. And all of a sudden, God began to raise up in me beyond myself, and I could speak it and don't even know why I was speaking it. Amen? So we follow the Lamb ever so where we goeth. And guess what? If I'm following the Lamb, I'm not following me. I'm following Him. Amen? So I hope you understand. If we're headed where the Lamb lays down with the lion, the lamb's got to change too. And all these things are happening to change the lamb. Do you hear that? Because the lamb can't be afraid of the lion. Amen? So all these reports coming your way, don't be afraid of them. They're coming to make the lamb lay down with the lion. Because there's nothing that can touch us except God allow. And if God's allowing it, it's to bring good. may not feel good. May not look good. You may not understand it. But that's when we come into the real things of God. Amen. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I'm, I didn't even get close to where I wanted to go, but I went where the Spirit wanted me to go. And that's what I always try to do. I don't never write nothing down because I want to follow Him. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. It's an honor to be with you. We are we're in a we're in a mood, like I said, God's shaking our world too. I mean, he's shaking it up. We're going to be in North Carolina the end of September for a whole, almost two weeks, doing a meeting out there for a sister. And and Bob said that this sister had called him, and they got to talking and hadn't talked in years, but this sister had a dream. And she said that she's seen a group of people coming, and they were going to change the whole east coast of the meeting that's going to come on out there. And, he, and she said, that was us. I don't know. It may be. I don't know. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is God's moving amongst his people. He's, he's, there's, a, there's a call. How many of you know that there's a first fruit people? There are some people that's not called to where we're going. Never will be. Do you hear that? And that's what you've got to understand. If you'll notice, God has always had a first fruit company. Amen? And... So anyway, we, we're, we're going out there. Like I said, Gary's in the midst of a move right now. He, he, uh, I mean, he's selling everything he has. Oh, that's brand new too. If any of y'all needs any kind of furnishing, I mean, they're selling their whole house. 
they got a beautiful living room seat over there. They give like three thousand dollars for that. It's like five hundred dollars. It's a it's a couch, love seat, recliner, chairs, tables, and all. I mean, it's a bargain. Yeah, yeah. If anybody needs any kind of furnishings or anything, they're selling out. They're moving. You know, you know. And I I, I keep they keep telling me. Say you're next. I said I ain't going. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm an oaky. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, if anybody would like to go see what they got, they have lots of stuff for sale. And they, evidently, they're making making it where you can afford it. They got a huge TV. They actually got two TVs. I don't know. They got that's a whole house. Anyway, they're they're moving out. Going going out to Bob's. So anyway, there's a lot of changes. A lot of changes. God is uh, God is requiring lots of His people to what much is given, much is required. Amen. The farther we go in this day, the less of us and more of Him. Amen. Uh, we'll be we'll be traveling out that way, and then we come back in October. We'll be in Tennessee, and and I don't know. They're talking about going out on the West Coast, out to California, and out through there. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm still trying to fit all that. Every one of my vacations would be going to minister trips. So, anyway, I don't know how far that's going to go. Do what? Yeah, come on. Yeah. But anyway, God bless y'all this morning. Thank you for your time. I hope that you had a paradigm shift this morning. Amen. Amen. That God's in control. And this lamb in me has got to lay down for mine. Amen. Cliff, I'm done. Amen. All right, if you would just hang on. I got things I want to share about in an hour, so if you all just hang on.